Meet Yarbo, a first-of-its-kind, multifunction outdoor autonomous solution. With a robust, novel design, this machine started its life as a snowblower and has become so much more. Yarbo aims to be your personal lawn and turf care assistant for a wide range of tasks all throughout the year. Uh, hey guys, welcome back to the Otmo channel. Uh, I am Seth. This is Jake. And today we're pretty excited. Something we've been waiting for a long time to get in our hands is the Yarbo. Some of you have followed us. Some of you know that we were anticipating getting this. So today we're going to talk about the modularity, um, some of the advantages of it, what makes it really cool, who it's for, um, and just kind of our overall first impressions on getting our hands on it. So for those of you who don't know, we are in central Ohio. Uh, we are not known for our snowfall. Um, so we have not gotten any yet. So unfortunately, we're not gonna have any in-depth testing with snow blowing capacity, but we are going to continue to monitor the snow. We're gonna keep an eye on our weather. We're gonna maybe talk to some local ski resorts, uh, potentially some hockey teams, see if we can just get some kind of snow or stand in and really get this thing tested for you guys um, and go from there. Make sure you like, subscribe, uh, comment, let us know if you have any questions about it, but uh, we'll go ahead and get into it. Another coworker, not Jake, Tim, actually helped me unbox Yarbo. Came with the primary drive unit, the snow blowing unit, and the charging unit, um, and actually as well as the battery, which ships separately. Overall, the experience was phenomenal. Everything was labeled very well, uh, very well put together, high quality packaging. Um, kind of echoes throughout this whole experience of everything seemed very high quality from the experience we've had so far with it. So one of the biggest wins with Yarbo and why we're most excited about it is the modularity of the product. Jake, do you want to talk a little bit about that? So as you can see here, we have the uh, snowblower uh, module, the S1, attached already. That is being released this winter, but moving on we will get into spring when they will release the M1, the mower attachment, and then in the fall they will have a leaf blower attachment. This isn't just a snowblower, this is a three-in-one system. And then down the line it sounds like they've got a lot of really cool modules planned as well. For our viewers who have seen our Equip Expo video, and if you haven't, go check that out, um, we do talk to the manufacturer and there's a lot of excitement there with what this product will shape up to be in the future. It has components that grow with it and they develop them around customer needs. Right now, it's super cool that it's a snowblower, but I cannot wait to test more of these attachments. So I think all in all, just like the unbox variants, everything is very well put together and robust. So if you're looking at just the, the drive unit, the Y1, I believe is what they're calling yes. it. Um, it is a uh, heavy <laughs> tanked uh, platform, um, which I think works in its favor for a lot of the capabilities. Uh, what are your thoughts on the overall? So of course, when we first got this, the first thing we wanted to do is get this out and test it in every application we could think of. So we took it to a park uh, house, trying it on different applications, also looking at what are the limits here. So working under trees, working with obstacles. Uh, you know, I had this thing climb a curb at one point. I'm definitely very impressed with the treads, with the, the quality there. Just driving the, the Y1 around, there already hasn't been much I couldn't climb with this thing. Yeah, and build quality looks great. Um, and I'll say, just to echo the modularity of it and their kind of thought process as they develop this, um, it was great to talk to them and hear a lot about how they've refined the serviceability of it by trying to make uh, parts replacements a little bit more modular. So that, you know, if you're buying something that is at a higher price point like this, you want to be able to service and maintain it either professionally or yourself for, you know, to extend that lifeline. So the higher quality parts and that thought process towards, you know, making it robust for replacements, um, I think is going to lead towards a much longer shelf life. You're going to see some limits in terms of the actual modules. Obviously, this thing isn't going to go up much in terms of angles, but for what it's intended, it, it, this has the capabilities and more. Yeah, especially in regard to the snow blower, ice, heavy, compacted snow, you need the weight, you need the traction. Yep. So I think that's going to lean itself towards, you know, accomplishing that goal easily. And then if you don't have the traction, there are studs that you can install on the tracks to make it even more powerful. So low center of weight, high traction. I think, you know, this is exactly what you need to get up under and really get through lots of snow. Uh, while we're talking about the main body, one thing I want to touch on is the cameras. So the main body has two cameras, uh, side facing, and then each attachment has a front facing camera. 
Um, they're high quality cameras and they also have millimeter wave radar. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how that affects obstacle avoidance? First, this, this will detect obstacles in its area. It will then work around them. What's really impressed me here though, Seth, is the pedestrians. These cameras are sensitive. They can pick people up almost uh, 17 feet out and then this, it, it stops its automation and actually announces that there is a pedestrian nearby. Once that pedestrian's gone, it, it kicks back into, uh, into its work. You need to have that comfort in that it knows what it's doing. It's not just going out and wildly blowing snow. It's, it's paying attention. It's, you know, clocking pedestrians, it's clocking animals and other obstacles so it's not tearing itself up or anything else that might make you liable. Going back to modularity again, the theme of the day, uh, the battery itself is removable um, and it is massive. Yeah, so we're dealing with 38.4 amperage hours lithium ion battery. This is also a battery that heats itself, so mm -hmm. it can charge itself and function perfectly fine in up to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That is something good to call out because, you know, something that's sitting out all winter, having that internal heating system to keep the battery at operating temperatures and extend the life, um, but also the ability to charge it safely. Charging batteries at colder temperatures is not good for them. So, you know, obviously having that in mind, it was built with that. So it's not always heating it because yeah. the battery itself warms up, but when it needs it, it'll heat itself up to make sure that it's at, you know, an optimal temperature. And then it's also worth mentioning that in the future, they will be um, releasing these batteries as a standalone power station. Yeah. So you can charge your phones, you know, you can take it camping. It's, it's going to be pretty versatile. And it underscores their thought process on making this useful more places than one. So Seth, we've talked a bit about the battery. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about the uh, charging system? Yeah. Uh, well, one, it's heavy, which, you know, is good because it... it it's robust, but the coolest feature I think is the wireless charging side of it. I've not really seen them on any other products. And I think with something like this and the use cases of, you know, working in the winter, you're gonna have snow build up. So with that in mind and not having to worry about contacts, you know, this can pull up on there, clean its own charging station and back in. And it's a nice flush mount system. It charges 24 seven, operates 24 seven. So when you're using the attachment, the snow blower, um, that's crucial. Jake, do you want to talk a little bit more in depth about the snow blowing attachment? It's about 21 inches wide, about 12 inches tall, um, two stage design. It has an adjustable chute and this actually adjusts itself automatically. So you simply tell this where the snow is to be thrown and it does all the rest. So when looking at the performance of this, um, at about an inch of snow, this will cover 6,000 square feet in uh, one charge. And then if it's about five inches of snow, we'll be looking more at 2,100 square feet. When we're talking about a lot of our equipment, it's being mindful of the operating schedule because, you know, instead of letting it accumulate five, six, seven inches, um, you know, that's when you send it out on a more regular schedule. So it's more regularly clearing so that one, you don't get the accumulation. It's always clear um, and you're good to go and you don't have to worry about the battery charge cycles or anything like that. Seth, could you tell us a bit more about the hitch? It does come with a bolt-on uh, hitch. Now, it can't do everything because I believe there will be an additional attachment for tongue weight, um, but the hitch itself would be useful and I'm thinking, you know, summer or instances where you want to pull things around that are heavy. So for example, the ability to move boats around, smaller campers, things like that. While you can't do it with the hitch that comes with this, the fact that that's thought out to have that ability for rear attachments and it comes with the hitch for basic household chores, I think is great. How's like your overall experience been with interacting with it? For starters, the app is, it's very intuitive. Um, you know, it's very easy to set up, um, very easy to get the network connections going. Um, you know, getting the hotspot going was was simple. Operating it, you know, setting up the mapping and all of that, it was, it was very straightforward. Excellent, yeah, and I think uh, along with setting up those maps, uh, one of the features they have, the intelligent route planning, um, I do like, I think we need to test this more in depth, but as you set up these different work areas, you know, when you tell it to go out and, you know, say, hey, can you go take care of this snow? Um, it knows what, what it needs to do, where it needs to go. So it determines the most efficient way to go about that. I think that's a great feature and um, really helps to make it more useful around the house. It does come with a controller. How is it with the, the controller itself? So controller, very used to this, just a standard Xbox controller. <laughs> um, I feel I feel right at home. It, it enhanced the performance of actually mapping this. It was night and day. 
Um, controlling the app, it's great to have that other option, but you can't get the um, level of accuracy in mapping with a phone that you can with this controller. The lines were straighter, you know, we were able to get right up to the edge of things. Um, it, was, it was great for, for maneuvering, you know, mm -hmm. if we needed to put this in a trailer. Um, it's, been, it's been a great experience. So obviously it's meant to be fully wireless and autonomous, but if there's instances where, you know, it needs to be run manually, being able to run it manually through the controller and not your phone, and in the winter when your hands are cold and maybe you have gloves on, that dexterity of a controller yeah. is much better than a smartphone. Yeah, this is going to be way more um, both usable, um, more efficient, and a bit safer as well. So within the operation and setup of Yarbo, uh, one of the crucial components here is going to be the network. It is wireless, uh, so that's huge. And I don't know that something like this would be great to have wired anyway. Um, so for connectivity, um, it does have Wi-Fi, 4G, uh, LoRa, or LoRa, um, and RTK. It will be a primary Wi-Fi connection, but obviously, unless you have repeaters set out, it may drop off. So that's when it might jump to the LoRa for data connection to talk to the maps and make sure that it, it can able to operate. Um, and then it'll jump to the 4G um, for just pure data connection. So the LoRa helps the RTK work continuously and the Wi-Fi and 4G, um, the intention behind those being data connection and cloud connection. All in all, with your experience with it, have you had any issues with some of these connectivity? With RTK, um, with 4G, uh, we've had a pretty smooth experience there. Um, there really haven't been uh, any hang-ups. With Wi-Fi, it seems to function a lot better on its own hotspot rather than using the Wi-Fi of the facility. This wasn't necessarily down to range either. Now, it didn't really stop us from doing anything because we could switch to hotspot mode and this thing always has its own hotspot, so we're, we're ready to go there. Those are the opportunities where I think that continue to be refined, but also illustrates the importance of having those redundancy network connections. So going back to the cameras, the millimeter wave radar, um, telemetrics, so it utilizes all these different sensors and systems and not purely reliant on the RTK and its map. In those instances when it does drop out, it doesn't you know, commit to being fully lost. It will use those systems to try and figure out where it is and reestablish that, connect, that connection. You know, spend a little time talking about use cases, maybe some customers, like kind of who this might be good for, what kind of mindset that could really utilize this. Of course, we're looking at residential applications. You know, nobody wants to wake up at 2 a.m. and snowblow their driveway uh, just so that they can make it to work. So that's obviously going to be a big use case for this. But we're also looking at commercial applications as well, where Again, you may have a team who can be on site pretty early, but having something that can come in and handle some of these challenges that grounds crews may face so that they can focus their energy on tasks that can't be automated. And to that commercial aspect of it, you know, I don't particularly think that Yarbo themselves are gung-ho about commercial. I think yeah. there are a lot of, you know, heavy traffic pedestrian walkways and you know you're thinking corporate campuses you've got your employees coming in early um, you know walking into factories walking into headquarters it's like so, so at a minimum can you keep that area clear consistently and then you can focus on the parking lot so i think those kind of things with commercial instances you know are where this is going to show up and do a good job managing that you know relatively well it is a much higher price point at about 7500 for the, yeah. uh, the the main body module and the snowblower attachment. You know, while you're you're buying this base unit, it's you're also buying multiple functions and you're buying into a future of multiple functions. If you're in a situation as a customer where you don't want to do your driveway and you're already considering some type of robotic mowing or you use it and you just want to keep pushing that and really like automate your full outdoor experience, that's where, you know, this is such a great starting point and really kind of on its own right now in the market. A lot of the thought that went into this vision in the first place uh, had to do with safety of the people who are actually out doing this work. Snow blowing, snow shoveling, it can be dangerous work. You know, you can slip and fall and have pretty severe injuries, whether you're a homeowner or whether it's for employees. Um, you're dealing with a lot less liability, a lot less potential for injuries or for slip and falls and uh, happier people. So, you know, they watch this video, what's next? This product is um, already in the process of being shipped. Anyone can go onto our website and reserve their spot and get this product as soon as it becomes 
available. Which it's slated for December, but you know, getting backlog caught up to all the pre-orders. If you want to demo in your area, um, check out Otmo, our CSSP location, see if there's anyone near you, reach out to them, and if they have a demo unit available, we'd love to bring it out and show you in person. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also leave in the comments any suggestions you have for things you would like to see us test with. We of course always love to uh, see those, see what people are looking for in this product and see how we can continue to um, show this thing off and um, prove its capabilities. We'll have a part two when we finally start getting some snow and can really start actually testing this in real life situations. So stay tuned for part two. Uh, until then, take care. Mm.